It's time to tear this Xbox One down and see how much fluff's inside. Hi guys, Retro Tech Ralph here with another repair video. This time it's the Xbox One that was just loaned to me, shall we say, from a friend at work. So the last video we did the power supply, that works absolutely perfect now. There was a capacitor on there, what wanted replacing. They all want clean now, there was loads of dust bunnies inside. It was ridiculous. Now this, I've already got it powered up in front of me, I've got it paired up to my controller for my S and works perfectly fine. He's not got that much on the dashboard to be honest, I've got tons on my dashboard. So yeah, we've got Call of Duty World War II settings. Uh, da -dum, da -dum, that way. Yeah, I could go to the internet and, and faff around and stuff but I don't want to go too deep into the account because it's not my account. I could buy something. No, that would be silly. I pro could probably do an update. I know you can't see the screen, but I could do an update, I could do whatever. But I think we'll do that later. So this works absolutely fine. It's got Battlefield 5 on here. I think I've got that somewhere. I don't think he's got the Game Pass on here. No. I mean, I do. Oh, he's got Golf, Fight Night and Wreckfest. Because I told him to actually play Wreckfest because it's a brilliant game. Yes, okay. So he's got lots of iPlayer stuff. For the hub, Netflix, yeah. Okay, so enough of that. Anyway, so let's turn this off. <sighs> Stripping this down. Now let me get this desk ready and desk cleaned. Power US uh, HDMI out. I think there's a problem with the HDMI because when I was watching that, that was fine, but if I would actually touch this, it wouldn't, it, it, something wasn't right, shall we say. So, right, we need to strip this down. Two seconds, quick cut. So for this project, we're going to dismantle. So we need, oh, I should have been ready for this one. Quite a few spudges and pry tools and bits and bats. I wouldn't recommend, I was actually starting the last video with repairing this one as well as the power supply, but it got far too out of hand of the power supply. And that's just its own separate video. Um, I wouldn't recommend using some metal parts or even screwdrivers to pry things off because it will dint the plastics when we're taking these off. Probably your plastic, a decent hard plastic spudger or a prize should be enough for what we're going to use on this. We need some torque screws. I think it's the torque 8, 9 and 10 we need. A couple of toothbrushes and definitely, he says being prepared, definitely my air blower. You get canned air and it's worth, I don't know, is it, is it a five or a ten or a can? And yeah, it, it's probably worth it if you're going to do a one-off, but if you continue doing this sort of stuff and maintain your PCs and your, your bits and bats and stuff, yes, you are going to you are going to use a lot of air in cans. So I don't bother with the air cans. I've used my blower. It's probably better pressure and... I made my nice little, pretty little brush end for it as well, so it blows and it brushes too. So, yes, that out of the way. Let's get started on this. So, so prepared, I'm absolutely so prepared. This is the type of videos I do anyway. So, first, Xbox. Xbox logo in the bottom corner. You need to stand it on its end here. This panel comes off first, so let's have a look. Let's try and get this off. I think it's in this bottom corner here. There you go. This is gonna this is absolutely filthy. I'm using another spudger. See, I'm not you've got these pegs that go inside. I think there might be three or four either side. There's three down the bottom of here, so we can see there. I'm losing my spud my pick. This will just pick. there you go. Peels off. Oh my goodness. Right. So to start with, we've already got enough fluff. I might collect all this fluff and give it in back. Right, so that's there. Second bit, you need to pull that out of the way to get that off and done. Okay, then we start to go on the back, but I need to do, I want to do something first. Oh, God. Right, the warranty sticker on the back. You will need that because behind here there is, I wonder if this has already been... With the stars on it, has it already been done? I was going to put some isopropanol on here and try and remove it, but it's already unsticky underneath anyway. Has somebody already been in this? The HDMI out there... 
I'm not sure whether or not the casing has actually got a problem with it. That one looks fine. This USB port is full of fluff. Right, so that's part of something there. The whole top piece needs to come off next. So we need to probably prise off. Oh, I hate these when they've got food in them. <laughs> Right, so we need to prise off in here to start with. I think we press down and that's just unclipped. That was very easy. I've never been in here. Ah. So I'm thinking I'm going to put a pick in there because there's one clip in there, but holding that out of place is probably a good idea. I think there are three clips on here. There's one which is there. I need to get that pick back. Just, just gently. This is with, with the doing this with plastics. I'm not damaging much on the lines of anything. There are a few over here as well. See, they're just coming up. There's one, I think, there, there, and there. They are equally spaced out. So pick in. To be honest, this is coming really easy. He says before a fall. And let's get the scalpel away. This side has also come off as well while we were doing that. So that's good. I know that there is a ribbon cable. So that's now off without even trying. So you've got these little bits here, there'll be pegs underneath here, which just clips into. So there's a ribbon cable on the front. So carefully. I think I watched the video and the was actually saying that when you put this part back in, you will never get it done first time. We will see. Oh, that's just disgusting in there. I think there's a part. Right, so it's definitely against. Is it this top part comes off? Yeah. I want the. I want to keep the front panel on. Because there's nice stuff in there. But the front panel seems to want to come off. I didn't think that came off with this. Yeah. Well, I definitely need to be careful because I said the ribbon cable is on the front. I don't need to rip that off. Ah. Right. Ribbon cable is there. We can see that. And just to try and be careful, it's wrapped around a connector right in there. And I cannot show you just yet, but I will in a second. It's the plastic part. You'll understand why I'm taking this. It wraps around the connector and should come off. There it is, right. Where the connector is, this part here da, 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 goes into the, the sliding connector. We've seen these connectors before, and this part around the edge literally wraps around it just to give it a little bit of security, but not too much. But this needs cleaning. That was actually easier than I thought. It's always good to watch a video through before you do anything. But I've watched a couple of videos and that panel should come off as well, pulling all the tabs up to give it a clean if I need it. I don't think I do. So let's get that out of the, the way. Oh God, this is ridiculous. Right, a lot of these will have like your C's on them. I will, I need to take off, I am gonna take the front panel off I think. And the, I think this is the Bluetooth slash USB part there. I need a screwdriver. <coughs> Actually, I need to clean this out before I do anything. So this is just disgusting. Two minutes, please. Well, for me, it'll be five minutes blowing this out, but two minutes, please. Right, things have been blown out. This this is a lot better. This is not perfect. Oh, oh my God, it's, it's just ridiculous. So what I'm gonna do here now is take off the aerial off the aerial. I don't think I need to take off the board to be honest because that's wrapped into there so I can leave that on top of there anyway. I'm going to start like I always do a lot of containers and I'm going to take off the Wi-Fi board. A lot of these will have a connector behind them so you're going to need to lift up. Don't bend it, don't whatever it, I think it's probably there because the connecting points are there so maybe just Trying to whittle it as it comes up. There we go. So you don't bend or break any of the connectors. There's one missing there. 
but there is one missing, simple as. So that's one pot there. If I can do them in order, then hopefully I should be able to figure out what's where and when it goes back together again. So I'm taking off that. I don't need to dismantle that fully, but I am going to. That needs a little bit of clean. So that's out of the way. That connects onto the front here. Maybe should I take the front panel off while I'm here? I think that might be a good idea. Can't really get in there. So I think we might have to leave that. So let's get on with these screws. They're all marked up. You've got C1, C2, and so on. So I'll remove them, put them in the pot, and that should take, I think that should take the lid off. And this is absolutely disgusting. Right, eight screws are done. All the C's, one to eight. There are one, two, three screws here I'm leaving in. I don't see why I'd need them, but I'm gonna take off now the top lid. So, let's have a look underneath. Ah, I know what that is, there's a fan. So, I'll show you in a second. In the corner there, there's a connector with a connector. The connector goes for that. And it's not a fan, is it? It's just a connector. Yeah, and that goes into the cable down there. Oh my God. <sighs> it's what I like about the Xboxes. The, even the original ones, they were all just basically a metal box with a hard drive, with a disk drive, with a power supply slash fan, shall we say, on a motherboard. And that's as... <sighs> as basic as they go. So more cleaning. <sighs> right, so yeah, these will go to the next, for that section. That's good. That's gonna get cleaned and that's just disgusting. Okay. I suspect this might have had water damage just in the past because there's a stain around here, which can be took off with ice broken on, no problem. Scratch there, I don't know where that's come from. Um, This, yeah, it got first clean, should we say. It's amazing this works. So disassembly, pull out the power, pull out the starter, squeeze the clip, if there is, no there isn't, and lift out the hard drive. This is a standard 500 uh, gigabyte Samsung, fine, got all these details on there. If you want to replace these, these four screws here, come off, take out, put in another, yeah, another hard drive, SSD, do what you want. <sighs> Fan. I think this is attached. Actually, we can take that out of there. Oh, flipping heck. I have blown this out already. There has been stacks of dust bunnies, fluff, crap, and all sorts. The drive, again, SATA, power, and this just lifts out. <sighs> I'd be impressed if everything works fine after I've done this. Some things get um, used to having all the fluff on. So taking that off, remove, just, because that's just, everything just sat in place on that now. With all the screws going straight through, going into these, all these holes behind the fluff, and in the middle, it releases the bottom case. <sighs> so we're still inside the metal case. I suspect that's held in place by, I don't want to remove the power, although I have to. I think these two screws here, the four for the, the X clamp, maybe two over here, because that's attached to the board. Yeah, so two, two, four, and that should get the metal case off. I need to remove this as well because this has gone through on that connector. So one, two, three screws there to be removed. Oh. Sometimes I like doing this stuff and other times it's just, it's just dirty work. Oh. A lot of fluff later, actually I've not even done them yet, have I? Right, a lot of fluff later. <laughs> the fans are looking better. So I need to get this off. So what have we got here? That's a T. I think it's a T8 or it's a T, um, T10. So I want those two screws out. Because that would be bad if I ripped the board off and ripped off the uh, power supply. It's obviously just strengthening for it. Actually, I've not took the front off either. Hmm. I think that's a different screw. Yes, it is. I think that's a T8 on the front. Okay. Three T8s on the front panel. Again, I suspect that this is going to be a connector that just needs to be pulled off, which is that one there. I'm just trying to say while doing two things at once. One, two, and three. The black screws. So I'll pull it out there, and then you've got that panel off. <sighs> so, put those two screws in there. 
because that can go in there. It, it's good to label or keep an eye on what you're doing. I still do suspect there's been some water damage on this, but it does work fine. There's the ribbon connector for the front panel. That will go into there, and then the actual square bit round it wraps around this part over here, and then you can push it into place and lock it in. It's just an extra bit of security, that's all. <sighs> right, so those out there. These two there for this side. USB. Okay, so that's obviously not coming off anyway. Can that back panel come off? Do I need that back panel off? No, that looks like it's stuck in place, so I don't care about that. That can stay there. Looks like it might be plastic moulded into there. That's a T8 or is it a T9? T8 looks like it'll do it. So these are for the clamp. Hopefully behind it. These will go in with them because that's the bottom part of the case. Can't get that out. Should have really put this end on the screwdriver. Down a buffoon. So two things at once. Look at that. Ambidextrous, Ma. I did both things wrong. Right. Um, I got the A's as well. I've done A. Ah, because A, two, three, four. So yeah, I've done it wrong. Maybe the screwing in place is better if it's in place, not out. Yeah, that's fine. So, I don't need to be out of way, I'm not touching just yet. I'm just holding that down, I think. Power supply out, and this should be stuck in. Actually, can I get the... Well, them pins are even holding in, that's weird. Okay. I'd like the whole thing out of here. That's not on. Have I missed something here underneath all the fluff? I don't think so. So this should come up. Have I missed anything? I think I have. No, I haven't. Come on, Ralph, what are you missing? This is made October 2013. So now this is <laughs> almost 10 years, well, it's nine years old at the moment. Why does that not want to come off? I mean, the board, not anything else. That one in as well? Ah, okay, that's in and hold it in place. So can I get that out? So that can go with there. Hopefully, there we go. So that pen, pick peg was holding everything in place. That's not too bad because it'd been getting blown anyway, but that'll get a quick clean in a minute. So then we're onto this part, that massive dust bunny under there. That's just fluff. So we have the clamp. We also have pads on here. For some reason, why are they like that? They should have thermal pads on them. Or have I done something wrong? There should be... Well, why are they there? They'll be cleaned off anyway. I don't know why that's there. It's it's kind of weird. Oh, I've got a bit over here. There, 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 there. Okay, so the X-clamp, I think we can do this with a screwdriver. Because I need to get in and then prise off. So I need a flathead screwdriver. This is probably the only time I'm going to use one on this project. It'll be easier with a clamp. I think you press down pry out. Once I get one off, the rest should f flow with me afterwards. Get the underside I need to pull. Just holding on to the... Now. It looks like it was almost off then. Okay, that's one off. You can, there is a, a tool that you can use to get these off with, but screwdriver should suffice, okay. One's off, one's off, so that's good. Once the third one comes off, we should be almost there. 
I've definitely got two off there. Okay. Maybe a better screwdriver would be a good idea. I need to try and get the peg. Because underneath is like the two forks that go underneath these pins. I can show you there, actually. Right on there. And once they're done, you'll push these back into place. And they should be clipped into clipped into its own. So I'm just going to go off camera a second and take those other two off. I think I've got something better I can use for them anyway. Now with this clamp out, I've got the third one finally out, a little bit more prizing. The fourth one should just easily just slide off there anyway. So make sure you put this back in that way and not that way around because it won't fit. A little bit of plastic there just sits in the centre. Now this has already come off from the board so I assume that the thermal paste isn't that good. I'm still weathered out by all these patterns on here. It's got to be something odd. So let's have a look at... Oh God! <laughs> Thought I'd clean this enough. Uh, that is absolutely filthy. I'm not certain if this is original or somebody has had a go at this. Oh my goodness. I, I know these things happen, but oh, this is why I have the blower. You've got to make sure these vents are clear out. Nice little copper. It's nice and clean. I can take the fan off, can I? Yeah, I'm going to take the fan off. Definitely want that fan off. So it looks like I've got... Is it these four clips here? Might need another spudge. I think I'll use a metal one this time. Because it might be quite hard on. I'll just stick to it. There you go. And dum dum Okay. Take two at a time. There you go. No, not yet. Oh, done. And the other side should just fall off. So that gives me the access to the bottom of the fan to clean it, even though it doesn't really need it. But I need to do that. That's just wrong. <sighs> so I need to clean this, blow this one out. I need to clean the thermal paste off because that's very, very dry. A little bit tacky in the middle and because it has been used, so it's still been flowing a little bit. But then we need to start repasting and putting things back together. So there is your board. And it's not bad. I mean, I know that there's there was slight issues with the HDMI when I moved the cable. It would it wasn't as tight in as what I'd hoped. But I don't know if I can do something with that or not. Just make sure the connectors are fine. I probably guess that it's just a chassis around it that might be a little bit um, not gripping onto the actual cable itself so I might just maybe pushing a little bit on there just try and make it so it clamps down a little so back to the cleaning again now I've finally finished cleaning everything oh dear right so the heatsink looks really nice and it's still cleaned off a little bit on there I can just polish it off now actually that's a s is it no It's no problem with any normal natural finger grease on my hands. I've been playing with isopropanol for the past half an hour. So was everything else. Yeah, that's good enough for, for me, I think. I think there's a scratch on it. I can actually see the Xbox logo on the... been imprinted onto here. I don't know if you can see that or not. So, that's nicely done. <sighs> right, so, we need... That needs to go the right way around. I know I need to thermal paste first before you start commenting to make sure it's oriented the right way. So that's there. If it's there. Hold on, where did the heatsink go? It's that way, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. Because it went that way. You dingbat. Hmm. Okay. So I'm going to put some thermal paste on. I'm going to find the thermal paste. Stick that on. I'll put the fan on first. I'll show you the fan. That looks a lot better than what it was. Heck of a lot better. So with the fan header being there, that needs to go that way around. So that needs to be there. So that just clip, clips into place. I can put one side in maybe, and then maybe the other. As long as it's in the corner. I'll probably eye this up yourself. That's a little bit over there. This looks fine. That looks good. That looks good, and that's good. So that's now on. So that will go that way around. OK. 
Okay. As if I put that the right way around, unless it went that way. Nah, damn you. <laughs> I'm sure it's that way around. So if getting these into the hole will be a small problem. No, because that will go that way like that. That looks like it fits properly. So if we went the other way around, the holes would be all the way over there. Hmm, okay, time for some thermal paste. Now I have a little bit of thermal grizzly left over from when I did my PC. Hopefully this is enough. If not, I've got some MX4, which should easily do the trick anyway. So let me just wipe the end so I'm not gonna contaminate as much as I think. I don't actually think there's enough in here. So my best way of doing this is doing a line, because it's a rectangular chip, you want it spread so it's rectangular, so not too close to the edge. And that should be enough. So I'm put the heat sink on, and all being well, that should be enough paste. And for this, the part film paste is on, I need the fan to go in the right place, and I need the X lamp. So I will try and line up whole hole. That's a little bit dusty on there for some reason. I do, do slightly suspect a bit of water's got in here, or something's got in here. Might just be grease and, and normal household whatevers. So that's going in now. Squashed in place. I'm holding that down and I put one in. Because that should lip over there nicely. One goes in. I'm going to crosswise. Can. Three is already in. Four is the money shot. Right, is that not on properly? In and on place. So that's. Why is that wobbling? That's on. That's on. Three isn't. Four is. So that is pushing down a little more. Done. Why is there a rattle on that? I do hope I didn't bend these when I took them off. That's okay, that's, that's there, that's hold it in place for the time being. And then we'll be screwing them in place afterwards anyway. So that should get rid of the rattle. Right, what's next? So as I had my pots as they were, we are going to put the bottom case and turn that around, put that in there. I need to put the back, there's certain bits I'm still seeing fluff on. <sighs> but I do that all the time. That just dropped in nicely. Not enough. Okay. Good. Lines up nicely there. So then I need to turn, actually I don't, I need Got these three parts in, and this one had the screw in. So, did that go over there? Yep. So, that one screw and the white peg. Got the screws in place. So the glass screwdriver I had, which should be there, going in. Okay, so that's holding that to the board quite a bit. It was these two pegs here, a little bit dusty. Can't put things back together when they're dusty. Right, so that goes two small pegs downwards into there and then clips into the metal case like that. Same in this corner, so these down. Tiny bit fiddly, but once they're in, they're done. So that's holding in place that one pot done. Spin around. Now we have the A1, 2, 3, 4. We had those in the black screws. So I'm not going to put fully in place. Enough. Actually, you should do these diagonal. I don't understand. Two. Three. These are screwing straight through that X clamp. The pegs that on the 
actual, yeah, the heat sink. So I'm gonna go around. I'm gonna go diagonal. It's not fully in yet. I think this is a T8. And this, if you look there on the bit, I've actually used this so many times. Ditless. This. I don't hold these in place as tight as a what as a sh well. I'd rather be able to just pull it tight like that. So I feel a little bit of tension. Off we go. It's done. So we have two in the front. That's the wrong bit. So these are T10s now. Okay. I have a loose hold on the screwdriver. So once it pulls me round, that's mean I know that it's tight enough. So we have B's on here, B2. If you look at the A's, the B's. So why do you put B2 there? B1 is either that one, that one, that one, that one. No, that's just being silly. Okay, so you see there as I'm doing it, I'm holding it there. We're not tight by. As soon as the screw goes round, I know it's tight enough. I don't need to go. And that's solid. That's absolutely solid. Right, let's keep going. Next part I'm going to put in is a front panel. This connects through that connector there, which goes through that part there. So put it on this side. You just push that in place on here, and that's it. Three screws hold it in place. You can obviously see where the three screws go. They're all the same. I think on the Xbox One S, I think one of these screws is bigger. Now, one bit, back to the T8. So I'm going to put the middle one in first. Again, try and put it as loose and nice and steady as you go. Don't want to break anything. There you go. That's now in place. So we've got a connector there for the sound bit and the connector there for the front panel. All ready to go. That part done. Next bit. Now we have long screws. So I'm guessing we need the bottom case. I will probably do, I might not bother doing anything on the case on the outside of it. I know what house is it going to. And to be honest, it's just going to get messed up. So that's in place. There. No. Yes, that's okay. Top cover, maybe? Anyone? No, not yet. So we need these two. Right, so I'll give these, the hard drive a little bit of a tittle. This goes up the top of here. It just sits in place in these holes because it's got a peg there for there, a peg there for, I think, one of these two here. It doesn't screw in place just yet, although the screws will be going through. Connect the power over here, the top, right there. Connect the starter to there. Same again with the disk drive. This is a DVD, is it Blu-ray? Blu-ray, it's not a Blu-ray, Blu um, yeah. BD-ROM drive. So it'll probably fit, actually it fits over the edge of here. Two pegs there and there, which should go maybe here and here, because there's two screw holes that will go through everything. So as long as it's lipped over the pegs, yeah, that's better. A lot more further forward. So these metal parts go where this sponge section is here. And that goes, slots into place. Yellow power cables just slots on. Red starter, click in place. Then, looks around for parts is missing. Then we can probably put the case on. Now that looks a lot better than what it used to be. That's nice. Remember, you got this cable here. So that cable needs to be connected into the board right there. Before you do anything, when you silly put it away and then realize you've got no Wi-Fi. And just nicely, steadily put in place. And we have the C screws. So now we're doing the A's, the B's, the C. So we've got C1, C2, C. Da 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 da. Another quiz. Three. 
C4, C5, C6, C, 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 Francis of where is C7, and C8. So eight screws to screw back into place. I'm just going to hand a little bit first before just, just going ballistic. Two more boards to put on, and then we can put the case together. Easy. So next is a speaker. Simply goes, because you've actually got a speaker part on there that shows you where to go. So in there with that part, and then push in with the top to get it clipped in place. And then the power socket goes on there. Another one done. So we're down to the last one. So this is the pass-through for here for the Wi-Fi. So your connectors there, connectors there. Going to ignore the aerial for the second. So just nicely, these very gently line it up, push into place, done. And I've got two screws. I'll go there and there. I mean, looking at this, for some reason, why have we got a Com One and a Com Three? So this actually wants more aerials. Is it or does it? But you we'll actually connect it onto that one anyway. I need a smaller T8 bit just to screw in place. I'll just do it by hand, don't need to go over the top. It's not like it's a movable part or anything. So in, in, in. Just a, just just got a bit wrong there. Second. That's fine. Just felt a little bit too hard for screwing in then because it might have cracked the plastic underneath. So that's in and done. Aerials. Just put them over the top because they are very delicate where these connectors are. The top and then the click in place. And then on the front as well, just do the same again over here. That doesn't want to go in. Should be okay. And that's that done. Now we're on to the top. Now final part, looks like it's putting the lid back on. And it's not as simple as just plopping on. This is quite still filthy, but to be honest, I'll give it a little tickle if I can, but it, it's still a million times better than what it was. So we need to put our ribbon cable in there. So that needs, right, let's have a look. That needs to go in there like that that way, and then this blue part needs to be wrapped around here and that needs to be pushed in. Mm, that's easier said than done, don't you think? And then needs to clip all in on the front there. Right, so that, that front part, it could... I could probably really do with this front part taking off of the case and then clicking it all in place afterwards. I wonder if that's a better way than what I've been seeing. So a lot of people just wrap it round. Hmm. Okay, yes. <clears throat> then I can get a brush on there as well because this edge bit is filthy. I don't, like I said before, I don't want to do perfect because I know <clears throat> the person this goes to, yeah, 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 I'm doing this for free for him, to be honest, as a favour. But at least I can show you guys how, where and what. So it looks like that would be better going that way. Um, <clears throat> so we open the front, it looks like we have a lot of dirt. There's a touch, yeah, there's a touch button on the side here for the pairing and the touch button on the front. Actually that isn't, that's, that's, ah, is that a light sensor then? the touch button, because there's nothing there at all. It must be just the light diodes somewhere on here. And it detects that it's it's dark, possibly, or it's just a, I don't know. That's a bit weird, because there's no, oh, you stupid idiot. Right, right underneath here is where the cable goes. So it's definitely a touch thing on there. So there's a button there, button there for the eject, with these two contacts and a button over here for that. So, that does look like it goes better in there like that. Yeah. And it clicks in place. But I can also get that ribbon cable in a lot easier as well. Oh yeah. That is a that is a million times easier. Yeah, I watched videos doing this and it was I, I thought there's gotta be an easier way of doing that. It has to be. So 
So yeah, it's twisted around a little bit there, push that on there, tie that to, done. Oh, that's easy. That's a lot easier than what I've been watching. <sighs> so that goes in there like that. And then hopefully, done. Hmm. I wonder if this went, this clips up to there, those bits go up to there. Right, so. Okay, so leaving that front bit off for a second, just push in place, that's all clipped in nicely. Oh, this is still filthy on some bits. Yeah, that's, that's a lot easier. Yeah, I was watching, like I said, I was watching videos and they, they, they did say it wasn't, you'd never get in first time. That's an easier way than, than what I was watching. Take the front panel off, of course. So now we want these two bits. So we're back on the side. This back bit's clipped back in place. That warranty sticker's obviously out of warranty. It's okay. That side bit's okay. That's, that's just too easy. All right, okay. So this bit goes that way, that way, probably that way. So that slides in place like these two bits on the side of the runner to place, then there's that nub nubbing behind there so you don't push that in too far. And then this can only go, oh, I find so much rubbish on this now. And it's annoying me, because I don't want to perfectly do this, as I keep saying. So, that goes on, clip, done. Well, that was easy, okay. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a more fettle. That's okay, that's fine. A little more of a fettle on cleaning, and I'll come back to this in one second for the testing. Now all I need is two, two wires, one HDMI and one power. That goes to the TV, that it just goes through, if it's got a through hole, through, pass through, whatever. So we'll go with there for the HDMI. It doesn't, I didn't do the thing properly, did I see I can squeeze it back in place. So that's, I've got it switched on, it's showing orange on the power supply at the moment. And that's gone to very light white. The television in front of me, you can't see, but oh, there you go. You can hear. I have no picture. I have it showing 1080p. Now, this is non edited. There you go. It could be clamped in better on the the wife on other the yeah on the hdmi it is booting up this is does feel quite slow to be honest but everything is in place there's bits i can't see the problem because his initial problem was the power supply itself which is over here was uh, faulting a little bit but it, it's it's fine it, it's showing white i'll test this longer testing yeah, I can feel the fan on there working. This is really slow. The S is a lot quicker. Maybe it just needs an update. Hmm. I have a network cable underneath here that I can do that with, and I've just pulled that cable out there. It is loose. I'll have a look, see if I can get that plugged in properly. So it clicks in place. It says hi, and the guy whose it is. I've got my controller already over here. Press and on it comes. There you go. So, got it working. That doesn't want to come out, because there's no disc in there. That'll pair, USB on the side. Yeah, I think we're done. That's, it, it's it's the same <coughs> mottled, weird sort of plasticky thing that's gone on the top as what happened with the power supply as well. And I don't know what the heck it is. It might be, let's just say it might be somebody put in pledge on it or dusters or, or or some sort of cleaning products and it, it's just not reacting well with the actual plastic but if this was bought brand new 2013 that's that's nine years ago yeah, it, it, potentially if things go on top of here because there's a big scratch there a gouge there potentially this could be what's happened to it yeah I, I'm, I'm happy with this i'm happy to give him this back it looks it is a lot cleaner, new thermal paste, that's working on there. I'm gonna give this an update in my own time and I'm gonna also address that HDMI port, all I'm gonna do with the actual casing around it, I'm gonna 
potentially squeeze it down so it holds onto that connector a little bit better. But other than that, that's us done. That's a successful, my first ever successful Xbox One teardown. I've, well, I did the S, but off camera. But for you guys, that's the first Xbox One teardown. You can get these, these are all over eBay. Get hold of one, play one, get on the Game Pass and, and play some good, really, really good games. So I did that myself on, I better not do that too. Oh, actually, that's all right, the fans there. Is the fan moving as well? Yeah, can hear it. But yeah, get one. They're easy to, to tear down like I've shown you and put back together again, a good clean out. <sighs> yeah, happy with that. So please like, share, subscribe if you wouldn't mind. But, um, we, we've got, uh, I would like to get up to 10,000 subscribers. I know I'm quite a way off, but with the stats that you see on YouTube, when you've got a channel, you, I know 95% of my audience don't subscribe to the channel. <sighs> Please subscribe, please give a, a thumbs up, comment in the, in the sections, contact me on social media, anything, everything, please. And let's get this channel properly rolling now for next year. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye for now.